Hi, my name is Howard Hugh. I am the Acting Program Manager for NASA's Orion Program. Um, we are very excited that uh, we could share with you the progress of our three spacecraft that is going to support the Artemis missions. Orion is NASA's next generation human spacecraft, taking the first woman and the next man to the lunar surface. We are very excited to be here and share with you our progress. Now, we can't do this without uh, the very many people that support the Orion program. And of course, we have um, suppliers and people who help build the spacecraft across all 50 states, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. Now, we also have our European partners who are significant contributors to the Orion program. Across 10 countries in Europe, they help also build the spacecraft parts and components that are necessary for us to fly to the moon. Let me tell you a little bit about the Artemis I uh, spacecraft. Earlier this year, we just completed a very important system level test that demonstrated Orion's ability to survive and operate uh, robustly in space. Uh, it was the uh, environmental test at Plumbrook Station where we uh, simulated the space environment for vacuum and temperature. Uh, and of course, Orion uh, passed with flying colors and demonstrated our readiness uh, for flight. Now, we only have a few remaining assembly tasks at KSC to pull the entire vehicle together. And then uh, shortly after that, we will be ready to hand over to our ground processing team and stacking on the space launch system. So very exciting time for us uh, regarding Artemis 1. Now, Artemis 2, we're also making significant progress there. Just recently, we finished bonding over 180 tiles for the heat shield. And the heat shield is at the bottom of the uh, crew module, which keeps the crew safe as we re-enter the atmosphere. It's a very high temperature, 5,000 degrees, so the, the, the crew needs a lot of protection, and that's what the uh, uh, heat shield material provides. And so very exciting uh, news there that we were able to, to finish there. And of course, we're making a lot of progress pulling the entire spacecraft, spacecraft together uh, for Artemis II, uh, doing a lot of work installing the hardware that is needed uh, to operate the vehicle and, of course, uh, getting all the uh, electronics and other components uh, inside the crew module as well. So lots of great progress there and lots of great progress over in Europe as well as the Europeans are pulling their final pieces of the European service module that provides the power and the propulsive capability for the spacecraft. So that's coming along as well. And of course, they will be delivering their part of the uh, spacecraft, and then we will be putting that together and be ready for Artemis II in the future um, as well. And finally, for Artemis III, we're also making great progress there. You know, the Europeans already have their primary structure in work. Um, Talia Elenia is delivering that in late September, so that's great progress. And of course, on our own crew module, we've got the first panel built. Uh, this is the panel with the, with the uh, windows, so it's very exciting that we're going to have this capability uh, delivered uh, in the near future, and uh, very excited that that's completed, and that's the first piece that we're going to have for Artemis III on the crew module. Now, uh, I want to congratulate Lockheed and AMRO for uh, making this possible. Um, it's certainly very exciting. You know, we're, we're getting close to flight for Artemis I, and then we're making great progress on two, and of course we've started making great progress on Artemis three as well. So really exciting times for the program. With that, I am gonna turn over to Lockheed Martin. I will introduce Mike Haas, who is the Vice President for Human Exploration and also the Lockheed Program Manager for Orion. Well, thank you, Howard. Uh, as NASA's prime contractor for the Orion uh, program and, and the spacecraft we're talking about, uh, we certainly work constantly, day and night, to uh, meet these aggressive schedules and to make sure that we're ready for the Artemis missions, as Howard described. Uh, today, we're particularly excited because we're here to highlight one of our great suppliers. So we'll be joined virtually uh, by uh, Mike Riley from AMRO Manufacturing, which is in El Monte, California. And AMRO manufactures the cone panels, or the, the sloped pieces. If you think of the, the Orion capsule, these sloped pieces along the top of the capsule are really critical components, and that's what the AMRO team manufactures. Uh, we're com actually celebrating the completion of that first panel. Uh, and uh, so I would like to actually ask Mike Riley to uh, talk about AMRO. Mike is the CEO of AMRO. He's actually the third generation of the Riley family 
uh, to run AMRO, and they have been a fantastic partner for the Orion program. So Mike, I'll turn it over to you and ask you to explain how you machine the panels and uh, have your team show us what it is that you do so well. Thanks for the introduction, Mike. AMRO has been in business for over 40 years, and I'm honored to be a third generation member of the AMRO family. AMRO has been involved in the Orion program since day one, and we are honored and excited to see what the program has evolved into. Standing next to me here, we have one of the cone panels for the Orion pressure vessel, the window panel. It's these windows that the next American astronauts will be looking at the lunar surface through, the first astronauts to do so since Apollo 17. This panel is currently complete and ready to ship to Michoud. We are also working on the second and third cone panels, which will be completed soon and also on their way to Michoud. Bola, tell us a little bit about your experience working on the Orion panels. And these panels are very complex. We understand the importance of precision and safety required. Here at AMRO, we use the latest technology to make these special parts. We also got to make sure we make good parts so the astronauts can back home safe to see their families. I'm here with program manager David Thompson. David and I are standing in between two SLS panels. David, can you tell us a, a little bit about the panels that we're standing in between? Yeah, I'd love to, Mike. Over here to my left, we have an engine section core, core stage uh, barrel panel uh, for SLS. Uh, right now, you can see it's in the flat configuration. We're getting it ready for inspection, then it will head over to forming. And then over here to the right, we have a LVSA forward panel. Uh, LVSA is launch vehicle stage adapter. Um, it's in the same flat state. It will be going over to forming after inspection. Uh, after this, you'll see a nice, uh, great contour, um, and then we will uh, get it ready for the customer. Excellent. Thanks, David. Thanks for all your hard work to make this program a success. Now, Mr. Howard Hugh, back to you. All right. Uh, now we'll answer some questions that we received. Uh, the first one uh, is from the Houston Chronicle, uh, Andrea Lenfelder. Uh, she asks, when is Artemis three set to launch, and what is Lockheed Martin's doing to ensure Orion is ready to meet this deadline? Let me see, I'll take the first part of the question and then I'll hand over to Mike Haas to answer the second part. Um, right now, Artemis three, uh, we're targeting 2024 to put the first woman and the next man on the moon. Very exciting times, we're making great progress. Not only is Lockheed making great, great progress, but also the Europeans, as I mentioned earlier, uh, making significant progress with the primary structure. So really great work going on there, and we'll be ready to meet those challenges and get us to the moon in 2024. So with that, I'll turn over to Mike uh, to answer the second part. Uh, thanks, Howard. So let's talk about what the Lockheed Martin team is doing, particularly for Artemis three. I mean, we've already talked about we're actually working on completing Artemis one, building up Artemis two, and now starting the manufacturing of Artemis three. So We've talked about the panel manufacturing, and we'll talk a bit more about that. But we have parts coming together from our suppliers across the country. Like Howard said, we have suppliers in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. And so we are pulling all of those pieces together. We're making deliveries uh, to our team at KSC. We're making deliveries to the European team. Uh, and we will continue through the, the next year. If you look at uh, 2023, targets to have this spacecraft ready to be able to fly in 24, uh, we have a lot that's going to be coming together just in the next year. All right. Thanks, Mike. Let's see. We've got another question. Um, this one, I think, is, is suited for Mike Riley and Amaral to answer. Um, Philip Sloss with uh, nasaspaceflight.com asks, can you tell us how the cone panel is manufactured at, er at Amaral and what is the status of the other two cone panels for Artemis three? Sure thing, Howard. That's a great question, Philip. Here with me to answer that is Program Manager David Thompson. Thank you, Mike. So how is a cone panel made? So it starts out as a flat plate weighing approximately 13,000 pounds. As you can see here, it's about 200 pounds in the form condition. This panel is a culmination of different departments here at AMRO. The first is forming. Then we go into five axis machining. We have CNC programming. We have laser inspection, a heat age operation. We go out to outside processing. 
And then finally we have final assembly. The other two cone panels which will be friction stir welded to this panel are currently in production and will be completed in a couple of months. All right, we have another question. Uh, this one is, uh, let's see if Mike Haas could answer this one. Uh, Andrea at the Houston Chronicle also wants to know, how many panels total come together on the Orion spacecraft and how many parts, nuts, bolts are needed to assemble the entire spacecraft? So Mike, I think you got a tough one. So obviously there are thousands of components that, that come together to make the Orion spacecraft. And, and again, I'll, I'll reference back to the crew module. Um, just to build the crew module, we're gonna talk in the order of 200,000 parts when we talk about you know, all of the fasteners and bonds and the tiles that cover the surface, so hundreds of thousands of parts. And, and that doesn't even include the European service module and the launch abort system that actually gets stacked on top of this. But I wanna focus on the, the key pieces of the pressure vessel, as we call it, uh, and how we have improved that over time. We're focused here with the AMRO team on the cone panels, there are three cone panels but there are only four other pieces of the structure that all get welded together. When we started on the Orion uh, project, we were over 30 panels that had to be welded together. And so over time, we have simplified that process down to just seven. And we've saved mass, we've saved time, we've saved cost uh, in order to do that. And so this is the first panel that we've been talking about today. We will uh, continue to deliver panels, AMRO will continue to deliver those panels through the course of the fall. All seven major pieces of the pressure vessel structure will come together at the Michoud Assembly Facility uh, in New Orleans uh, by this fall, late this fall, and then we'll start to weld those together with the friction stir welding process that uh, we have developed on earlier NASA programs and use today. Uh, by September of uh, 21, then we would actually expect to deliver that pressure vessel to Florida, to the team in the operations and checkout facility, and then they'll really start building up the entire spacecraft. And finally, we have one last question from Leonard David from newspace.com. He asks, with the increasing role of entrepreneurs in space, how best can the larger space primes work with these groups? Any advice on this? Let's see, I think uh, Mike Haas and I both could answer this question. I'll start first. You know, we are certainly um, working together uh, with the commercial partners uh, to improve not only uh, their design, but also give them data. So uh, we've given a range of not only requirements, uh, data products, test data that, that uh, we've generated, uh, reports, and of course, all the design uh, aspects that are important to uh, the commercial space flight uh, programs we provided as well. And some of the examples include uh, parachute data, which uh, obviously provides a, a safe landing for the crew, uh, aerothermal, uh, aerodynamics uh, database and data, um, all the testing that we've done um, across the board, uh, the GNC uh, guidance navigation control design, and also uh, re-entry data. So lots of significant items, over a thousand products that we've given to uh, these uh, uh, commercial partners to enable them uh, to be successful as well. So I look at it as a partnership uh, across all the NASA programs to help each other and learn from each other. And let's see uh, if, if, uh, if Mike has additional inputs. So the question of, of entrepreneurial companies is, uh, is a really fascinating one. We've seen so much happen in, in just the last few years. With the supply chain that we have in Orion, and Howard had mentioned that earlier, that we have hundreds of companies across the country that are all uh, providing, and, and probably half of our uh, suppliers are actually small businesses. So when we talk about uh, newly started companies, entrepreneurial companies, they certainly fit in that kind of range. All right, thank you for to Dr. Haas and Mike Riley for uh, helping me today and joining us on giving a, a status of Orion. Um, today, uh, it's been a great day uh, getting um, a discussion with you in terms of our progress and uh, fielding some questions from the uh, reporters, so appreciate that. And uh, stay tuned, we've got a lot of exciting things happening in Orion. We've got a lot of great progress, like I said, across all three vehicles. We'll. Uh, We'll certainly talk about um, getting ready for launch, our, our what we call path to the pad, 
and uh, supporting all our Artemis missions going forward. It's a very exciting time for us at NASA and looking forward to uh, you joining us on that journey. Thank you.